Christian movie makers are inspired to do their job for many reasons. Sometimes they want to highlight an important tenet of their faith. Sometimes they want to show you the consequences of being a dirty heathen. And of course, other times they want to delve into the very important apologetics about timeshares. So that's what we're going to focus on today with our latest installment of God Awful Minis. So Marsh, what are we going to be breaking down today? We watched The White Candle. It's the inspired by true life story of a mortgage broker who collapsed the world economy entirely, but then <laughs> prayed her way back into personal prosperity because the message that she took away from the Bible was that Jesus just loved him some money lenders, essentially. <laughs> it is a confusing message, but that is in the Bible. And Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if you love the genre of something good happened to me, so those kids in Africa probably just didn't mean it hard enough Christian testimony, but you feel like the good and bad days of muggers don't get enough time in that limelight, <laughs> you will love this movie. Yes, you will. And is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I've got to go straight in with best worst sympathetic main character. Mm -hmm. The lady that this movie is based on was a predatory mortgage broker who lost her job during the 2008 crash that she and the people in her industry caused. Like in real life, the actor? No, no, the uh, the lady it's based on. So like the one who wrote it, it's like a... Oh, it's the story. It's an autobiographical story. Yeah, yeah. True absolutely. story. Yeah. Yes, she's, wow. got a, she's got a YouTube channel and everything about how she's now this great realtor again. <laughs> but in the middle, she went on to make ends meet by being a timeshare salesperson person and she attributes the fact that she got back to prosperity and have loads of success to the secret and manifestation okay and then she also said that she got married to her husband on their first date actually as their first Yikes. date was their marriage honestly she could only be less sympathetic if the movie opened with footage of her drowning a bag of kittens it really is that bad <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i was gonna go with best best how to this movie is mostly a how-to for praying, which is just <laughs> wishing for stuff. And the mm. characters seem very confused about how that might work. There's a lot of questions about the process of how to pray. It's craziness. Yeah. In a related note, I'm going to go with best worst miracle, the denouement the money shot, if you will, of this short film is so fucking depressing. We'll talk about it when it happens. <laughs> it really is. All right, let's get right into it. So we start with a cold open on fake Kristen Wiig. Right away, I was like, is Kristen, Kristen is that Toupé, actually? if you will. Kristen yes, Wiig? yeah, I had her as less convincing Kristen Wiig, Kristen Toupé. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, Christian Toupé. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I stole your Marsh. I stole your joke, Marsh. He wrote it down. He wrote it down. Literally I thought I was inventing line. it, but yeah. I just read it. I moved it to the top of everything. I just read it. I did this to Heath once. He has never forgiven me. <laughs> Yeah, so Kristen Wiggle Room, she's trying to pray, <laughs> but she finds that concept very confusing. Yeah, as she's being confused, her eyes look like she's a dummy being worked by a ventriloquist. It's just like side to side eyes the whole time. Yeah. So yeah, she's confused and she's like, yeah, nobody taught me how to pray, but I think it, I think it's just wishing for stuff. I, I pray that I'm praying right. That counts, right? You have to let me now having said that pray right. Imagine needing to be taught the right way to do wishful thinking. You just think wishfully. That's basically yeah, it. You that's got it. it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then we cut straight from there to her job, which is selling timeshares at a place called Viage Travel Group. I have no idea. I was on tenterhooks as to how they were going to pronounce that. It's V-I-A-J-E. So it's like Viage, <laughs> Viage. Yeah. Is it real? It, I feel, it's, I like they're, it's like they're bluffing at Scrabble. I think they just came up with right, something. Yeah. <laughs> they don't say it at any point. They literally do not met, like say it out loud. It's very disappointing. And we should point this out that like timeshares, especially the kind of timeshare sales they're doing right here, are a scam, right? Mm. And look, I know there are people out there who are just like, I want to go on vacation the same place for more money every single year. And like, good Good for you. But like, for the most part, the consumer of timeshares are people who get scammed into timeshares. So we're going to start with our protagonist throwing three card Monty for passersby, yeah. essentially. Oh, yeah. It's like, isn't it an industry that's such a scam that an entire industry sprang up as to how to get you out of timeshare agreements? And right. then that indus industry itself became a scam. That's how <laughs> it's also a scam. <laughs> yeah, it scams all the way down. Yeah. Okay, I did enjoy that the people who come in to be pitched 
are not getting scammed. They're just like, yeah, we'll take the free uh, two night stay that you're offering. We'll just take yes. the, the free stay. And like, well, yeah. no, I'm going to try to say, shh, 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 shut the fuck up. Two night stay. I want the two yeah. night stay. And then they get mad about it. The salespeople are like, people keep taking two night stay. This is bullshit. <laughs> they keep taking the free thing. Yeah. We're supposed to sympathize with them. We're supposed to be like, Psh, I don't think those people were open to the amazing opportunities presented at <laughs> after all. <laughs> And they are amazing opportunities because she does say we go to more countries than anyone else in this industry. And then she names like two Central American countries and an island <laughs> off Central America. But I don't think that's the full range of countries there. Yeah. I mean, they are failing at fraud. That's technically good in some sense, but they don't know why it's good. <laughs> so they're talking about that. And then all of a sudden, Jesus Christ of Nazareth shows up. Yes. And he looks very silly. Okay, they, I never understand this. Why do they put Jesus in these movies in modern sandals? Right? Like that's not more relevant to the Bronze Age than jeans and a t-shirt. I know they're always like, hey, sandals, just like Jesus wore. <laughs> right. Those are Jesus's Crocs right there. It says Birkenstocks on the side. Why, why would they do that? Oh, and I really wanted Jesus to just be there for the free two-night vacation. And they've got to like offer him a cozy tomb with a lovely view of Gethsemane or something. Because he likes a two-night vacation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but these two salespeople, it's Sharon and Kate, right? Sharon's the main character. Yeah. And so they, they start arguing with each other about who has to take Jesus for the sales pitch. Because apparently they each have two strikes. And in this job, if you don't sell three people in a row on the same day, you're fired, I think. Right. Yeah. And I looked that up and that's real because I wrote a joke. Like, Isn't that ridiculous? That can't be true. And then I looked it up and it was genuinely true. That seems untenable, right? They would go through the entire human population at that job. Yeah. I have no idea how it's possible, but I, from what I saw, there are some places that have that rule. Now I just want to keep going into those and be like, nope, 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 you're all fired. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. You guys have to shut down. You have no more salespeople. <laughs> Come back in in a mustache. I would like to hear about this timeshare opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus assures her that he is not looking for a timeshare. <laughs> he's, he's actually offering a timeshare to her that she literally can't afford not to buy, which yes. is heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And there's this amazing moment where they're kind of scamming each other, right? And both the actors are like, <laughs> our lines are similar. <laughs> <laughs> and she's really surprised because he comes up and he knows her name. She's like, oh, how do you know my name? But imagine being surprised that a stranger knows your name when you just gave a timeshare presentation to a bunch of strangers <laughs> and you've been chatting to strangers all day. <laughs> yeah. She gets confused about way simpler things than that, but definitely that too. So God's message via Jesus here is that like she is loved. God's a big fan of timeshares and she's going to be fine on money. She just needs to uh, have faith. And he says, I need you to go get a white prayer candle, specifically a white one and pray to God and you'll be fine. Now, Keith Marsh, while Jesus, the son of Nazareth, uh, the Nazarene and the newborn God mm -hmm. is talking to her. Does she pay attention the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. she would, but she's accidentally plunged underwater at one point from the sound effects. Oh, yeah. oh, she's having some sort of stroke. I can't quite tell. She just She's playing Candy Crush, sending yeah. out tweets. It's so funny because all of a sudden <laughs> she spaces out while Christ's message is being delivered to her. He want, want, yeah. want, 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 the was like Charlie Brown's of family. The universe. Mm. All, of a, all of a sudden he sounds like he's you know, stuck in a locker full of water or something after getting <laughs> bullied. Yeah. Also, question, does God say no to prayers if it's a different color prayer candle? Is that the way it works, according to anybody? Must be the mythos, must be part of it. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Must we do. are presuming from this movie that like if she had gone home and gotten a blue candle, he would have been like, fuck it, let her kids starve. <laughs> <laughs> or is it like variants of what, what if it was like off-white or eggshell white? Does she have to get like a, a color chart out to see just how white this candle exactly. is? Exactly. Whether it's going to count. Yes. What about before candles were invented or before white dye? Like what, like Marsh was saying, exactly. <laughs> God's just sitting up there being like, invent fucking candles, idiots. Maybe I'll do a prayer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so uh, a really minor detail as well, but I had to point out she's wearing a ridiculous necklace. It's somewhere between a knuckle duster and the exact crop circles from the film Signs. That's what's hanging yeah. from her neck. I don't <laughs> know why, very, but it is. Very unclear. Definitely Signs. So that scene ends and she walks outside of her little office 
And she gets on the phone with, I guess, her boyfriend or husband. And the first thing he says, she explains that like, yeah, I was just talking to this weird, like, guy who thinks he's Jesus maybe. And the boyfriend or husband is like, why would a Jesus guy talk to you? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. He says, why would, he, why would this guy talk to you? You don't know what to believe. Which is also, or you don't know what you believe, which is such a weird thing because apparently this lady must just make her lack of conclusion just a regular topic of conversation with people in her <laughs> life, just regularly. Yeah, so she explains, yeah, this Jesus guy, he wants me to buy a white prayer candle. What does that even look like? <laughs> the guy on the other side of the phone is like, wow, you're fucking dumb. Okay, uh, you know <laughs> colors? Uh, mm. One of them's white, you know, candles. Slow down, slow down, Sorry. slow down. Sorry. I'm notes. writing this yeah, down. Pen, pen. Sorry. You know, <laughs> cylinders, the shape, it's like that. Yeah. And then he just explains, yeah, you just light it and pray. And she says, I wouldn't even know where to start. She has no idea what things are in the universe. Yeah, it's not that difficult. Like, light it and pray. We'll start by lighting it. So pick up a lighter, go to the top of the candle with a sticky outfit. That's where you'd start. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can figure it from there. In my head, I was like, wow, she's going to get fucking weird with a prayer candle because she has no <laughs> idea what to do with it. But uh, the husband boyfriend guy says, actually, I think you could really use a talk with God. I think that's a great idea because, you know, fraudulent career, you should, you're a bad person. And we also learn here that she has hardly any money to even buy a prayer candle. She's sitting in her car now trying to figure out if she has enough money for gas and she's fumbling for like change in the little cup. She has exactly $1.68. So th this confused me a little because I thought by prayer candle, she meant the ones that you light at a church. So you go along to a church and you can just like pick one up for whatever donation you get. You can just go along mm -hmm. and get that. So you just give them the smallest coin you have. Because there's a friend of mine does that. Whenever she goes abroad to like visit cathedrals in cities, she always buys a candle at the cathedral, but puts in the smallest denomination currency available in that country for that candle <laughs> to like very slowly like make the church make a small loss on each Got candle. Him. That's just right. Like slowly seep away. Economically untenable. I will just <laughs> now I wait for a long time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only 999,000 trillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she drives away and she pulls up at a gas station, which has a convenience store. She walks in and the first thing she sees are blue, yellow, and red candles. And she's just like, fuck, ah, magic's not going to work. Why does this store have such an extensive like magic candle selection? It's got three aisles in the entire store and one aisle is completely given over to magic candles. Yeah, welcome to America, Marsh. <laughs> welcome to America. Yeah. Also, I have to talk about something that doesn't matter to the movie, but matters to me. The absurd body check out of they, nowhere. Yes. Okay. They have arranged for an actress to bump into her and be like, oh, sorry, but that never matters and that person never comes back. So why did they have that? I have no idea. Is it meant to be an angel? Because she couldn't find the prayer candles and then she got body checked and then she's like, oh, they're right into here. Into the candle. Yeah, basically into the candles. But yeah, the, exactly. But the body check was facing away from the candles. <laughs> okay, maybe it got her it, attention. It, it, was, it was hitting the, the angle to oh, make a spin. Okay, that's it very okay. well. Oh, oh maybe there's been a better. spin check. Okay. I love the idea that God's in heaven and he's like, shit, she didn't see the candles. Gabriel, get down yeah. there. I am fucking invested in this. <laughs> well, she was too stupid to know how to buy and light a candle. So she really does need to be spoon fed on this entire process. Yeah, no, sure. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, she gets body checked into that second dedicated section for prayer, <laughs> prayer candles that they have. <laughs> the magic white ones are separate in this spot. So she can find the good magic stuff. Yeah, just right underneath the bottles of hand soap, you've got all of the magic candles. And she like picks one up and I thought she was going to like turn it and read the back of it to like compare the flavor of Jesus to a different candle <laughs> to see like which, which Jesus does she want. In the end, she goes with eye roll Jesus, a classic of the genre. Sure, sure. And then she takes it up to the counter and the guy rings it up and she has exactly the amount of money that she needs for one prayer candle. So to be clear, they're in California. I actually looked up sales tax ballpark. <laughs> the candle was a dollar fifty-seven plus tax, apparently. But it's such a dick move because now she's got zero money. God could have said literally any amount less than every penny she had, <laughs> and she'd have been better off. And who set this store's pricing policy? Like, oh yeah, this this candle is one fifty-seven is specifically the right. price of this candle. Yeah. <laughs> 
What? Hey, Chris, are you rolling a series of randomized dice in a vacuum <laughs> to price our objects again? Also, if she was short on the money, she would like maybe go to hell. Is yes, the message absolutely. here? Yeah. And Jesus floats down. Let her use the penny tray guy. Come on. Don't do your, I see you it's, pulling it away. The candle's 175. Jesus comes down from heaven, offered to suck him off for it. <laughs> Offer to suck him off for it. <laughs> and also, like, just, just going through the real story, I watched the lady tell her real story that inspired this film. The reason she had so little money, she said, is because she drove a gas guzzling Humvee that got like 10 litres to the, uh, t- 10 litres to the gallon or something like that, or, or whatever it was. That got almost no, 10 miles to the gallon. So, like, she had no money because her car like took so much gas she couldn't afford to get anywhere. That's why she was wow. so uh, so out of money at this point. That's the sympathetic character. She's going to claim she doesn't have enough money to feed her child, but she owns a Humvee? Seriously? Yes, correct. Yes. Wow. That was, that was what she said. She's roll, rolling coal while she explains that they can't have any Christmas yeah. presents <laughs> that year. <laughs> okay, so she gets her magic candle and then we cut to back home and she takes it out and she's like, oh, I, I bought a candle. And she, she goes over to her fireplace to light it. Yeah, and she just has like the lighter just lying around at this point. And apparently that lighter is set to flamethrower because she clicks it and like the <laughs> world's largest flame just shoots out of it. I wanted the lighter to be out of fluid so bad and she has to go back to the convenience store. <laughs> be like, can it Jesus blow you again? I just, just quick, small, I'll take a small bick, whatever. But yeah, she puts it in the fireplace and she lights it and then she prays. She's very bad at it. She's like, hello, God, today, stupid. Ah, I've decided to believe in you for a minute to help my very fraudulent career. And then she mentions that she can't feed her son tomorrow, even though she owns a Humvee. Yeah, she's like, I feel like that last couple was really close to the sale. And if you could really just have them talk it over and come back. Oh, also, I'd like to feed my child. That's, uh, <laughs> but I, I can't emphasize that that is a second priority for me. And it, it's a really minor thing. But the dialogue she's given us here is the dialogue from the opening scene. But now she's delivering it like kneeling. And we're, do, we're watching but, her from an, <laughs> an angle that would usually be labeled POV. Is yeah, what that would normally yeah. be. And she's talking differently. So they shot this yeah. multiple times. And they were like, no, no, we have to keep both. I love both of these takes. <laughs> so they don't line up their cold open with getting to their cold open. The first gonzo Christian movie, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to, I think, the next day. And she's looking at a mortgage past due thing to make it Bingo. extra scary. Just for context, she lives in Diamond Bar, California. We can see her address on the top of the thing. Average home price there, I also looked this up, $1.1 million. So not a lot of sympathy. <laughs> Although credit to the movie makers, at least they remembered not to use their real address on the letter. So that to put them yeah, ahead exactly. of most of the a, films that we review. Ahead of most scams, <laughs> for sure. And they also pan over to show that she recently got fired from her job. She was the VP of something. Marsha's research tells us she was the VP of predatory loans at some shitty firm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But she's the vice president of this company. How is she impoverished? She yeah. and it's been so recent that she hasn't unpacked the box. So she's only just been sacked from being the vice president of a company. And yet all she has to her name is one dollar sixty eight. Those vice presidents at mortgage companies, they're living paycheck to paycheck. They really not are. all of us not all of us have the dosh to toss around like you math teachers and skeptics. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she took a loan from herself and got fucked on it. Shit, I repackaged myself yeah. with a bunch of empty houses. Oh, no. <laughs> Hoisted by my own petard. So she's all sad, and then she makes a phone call. Whoever it is doesn't pick up, but then she gets another call right away to her, and she picks up, and she says, hello, like it's a fucking rotary phone from decades ago. <laughs> and the guy on the other end, Patrick, is like, hey, you know... It's, it's Patrick. Why would you say hello? And then I have to explain myself. This is weird. Turns out Patrick is her former boss and he has a job for her. He has like one more amazing loan deal that she can do and get the commission from. Yeah, it's a million dollar VA loan and she'll get a $20,000 commission on it. Right. And it has to be done in exactly two weeks that's not a dramatic amount of time. Like, I think you could probably work out the details of a loan within 14 days. But like the way that they're pitching this, he says like, it's a loan that nobody else has been able to get done yet. 
So he does say yen. I've I checked it like five times. He's, they leave in him saying yen rather than yet. Absolutely Strange. ridiculous. But they're making it out like she's the only person who can work out how to deal with this. And they're trying to call her in like they're coaxing a hitman out of retirement for one last job. <laughs> right, <laughs> right yeah. exactly. Only one woman could get this done in two weeks. Exactly. Uh, come on. You were a predatory lender. You had like a drive through little kiosk for making loans. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. Also, just to be clear about the big context, the best plan from the god of the universe was one last predatory loan with a commission. That predatory loan for a veteran. Yes. That's God's yeah. plan. Also, she lies. He says, like, who are you working for? And she lies and says, like, Wells Fargo. So, like, her, her plan here is to just lie about who she's working for and handle this loan. And that just never got found out. That, that feels like a very short-term <laughs> yeah. lie that is going to pretty easily fall apart. But they chose to include it in the movie, right? Like she was writing yeah. the script and she was like, oh, and I should point out I endangered someone's livelihood and household based on my inexperience. Gotta keep that in the film. Yes, because she even says, like when she hangs up, she's like, she's never done one of those loans before, but she's gonna just like wing it and work it out. It's like, Jesus Christ, she's and you wonder why dogging. the economy of the entire world crashed because of you. <laughs> like me being a DJ, just, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's gonna do the loan deal. And then we cut back to... Viaggi headquarters, <laughs> and she wants to talk to her receptionist to get the contact info for the Jesus guy. Yeah. She comes up and she's like, I'm trying to get an info for the guy. I wanted her so bad to be like, his last name should be Nazareth or of Nazareth. <laughs> Check her O. <laughs> right. But the, the receptionist is like, hey, Sharon, you didn't have a third person that day that you're referring to. I don't have an of Nazareth. I don't have a third person at all. Right. And then she stops her coworker and she's like, hey, you remember Jesus of Nazareth who came into her office? And she's like, no, I didn't. Which again, like, I'm sure is something that actually happened. So maybe she didn't remember or maybe pregnant lady doesn't want another strike for the thing she knows she'll be fired for. <laughs> sure. It's so obviously that like the degree to which this actually happened is like some random guy walked in, said something weird to her and left, and she's made her entire personality about it. And the, her friend is just gaslighting her because she doesn't want to get fired. <laughs> and that's become the, the whole purpose of this miracle movie. Right. Right. So big mystery. Don't know what happened. She goes back home again and they show the check that she got for her commission for like $26,000, but they show it for a, a decent amount of time. They couldn't find a fake check so they have a real check from the film production company that made this. <laughs> sure do. And they just sort of scribbled other numbers in pen yes. over, <laughs> over both the routing number and the account number. Just to be clear, the routing number is a publicly known code for publicly Chase known in California. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the account number matters. And I definitely know the account number for this. <laughs> shitty custom <laughs> film company because they didn't scratch it out good enough. We're not saying you should commit fraud. We're saying if you're going to commit fraud, we know where you should commit. Yeah, right. yeah that, is, that is very fair. <laughs> right. So she looks at that. She's very happy. And then she walks over to the candle in her fireplace and it's still lit. So it's been lit like at least all day while she was at work and she came back? No, it's been weeks because they like, were 14 she, days. 14 yeah. Days. Like, did they get weeks. confused about what religion they were doing? And the candle <laughs> burned for way longer than it should have done. Fuck, did we do Judaism? Cut. All right. <laughs> oh, no, we did Judaism again. <laughs> okay, but honestly, having the house burned down and she gets the insurance money would literally be a better plan from God. <laughs> <laughs> insurance fraud would be more ethical, I think. On a house worth a million dollars. Yeah, absolutely. She right? could go, like, yeah, move sure. somewhere with a, a slightly more affordable house. Yeah, and the kid could have some food. <laughs> All right, well, now that we can sleep soundly, knowing that Christian predatory lenders and timeshare salespeople are going to be fine because God <laughs> loves them, I guess we can wrap up another God-awful mini. 